Hey gang, it's me, it's Shannon. Uh, it's yet another episode of Sheepless Needles. It's a vegan podcast. It's not about being vegan. We do all sorts of fun stuff. We play with bunnies. I love him so much. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> I know you do, honey. I love him so much. I know you do. Oh, buddy. Okay, so anyway, we we play with bunnies. That was one ear. He will be in and out. Um, we talk about cats. We talk about bunnies. We just talk about life. Yeah, that's what this is. It's just a shit show of a podcast, and I'm glad you're here. If you're returning, you're my people. I'm so glad we found each other. If you're new, you're our people. So glad you found us. Hang out, pull up a chair, grab beverage. Let's get it going. Um, I've got a little bit of a weird setup today. So if I hit the mic and stuff, um, it is what it is. Okay, so today, people, I have my... This is my Gem City... Uh, Dayton Beer Company, Stein. It <laughs> now, I do, <laughs> I do know a little bit about pottery. Not a lot. Look, I'm not. I don't have a wheel. Nothing like that. Um, but in my prior life of retail, I did work with um, pottery a lot and some local potters. And what I do know is when something is really heavy, <laughs> this <laughs> this this needs to be a little lighter. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, but I thought, you know, we're headed into fall. We need a dark. Okay, we'll see. Let's get, let's just get, let's be real. Okay, here's the deal. I really wanted to have like a pumpkin beer today, but in Ohio, it's going to be about 90 today. And uh, fall beers like that in 90 degrees and me do not mix very well. In my mind, I think they would. But in my belly, they don't. So in my head, when I was upstairs, like, oh, what am I going to drink on the podcast today? I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll grab an IPA, but I'll grab like a dark fall chicha where it will house itself before it's in my belly. So anyway, that was my choice on that. So then for the beverage. Ooh. All right. Well, it's called Cosmic Slop. I'm sure you can see that. This is Branch and Bone. This is yet another local brewery in Dayton, um, who I am very impressed by, I got to tell you. Now, I've never actually been to Branch and Bone, and they're literally, they're not even a block from my work. I mean, maybe a block that might be pushing it. Um, so I have no excuse for not doing that other than the fact that I work from home. So here we go. Cosmic Slop. Foam, foam, central. We'll just have to let this settle down a little bit before we imbibe. So I hope you have your beverage of choice, coffee, tea, Shirley Temple, beer, whiskey, whatever it is. Look, it's happy hour somewhere and any beverage can be happy hour. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. In my case, we're all lucky that it is. Um, and that's enough said. So life, you guys, life. Um, last two weeks, what have I been up to? A uh, whole lot of nothing. I've been working. I've been on the mend, you guys. I am feeling good. I am feeling much more rested because I got taken out by COVID back in mid-August. Um, I'm doing better. I'm doing much better. I started working out regularly again. And whoa, I the hit that my body has taken from COVID is not something I expected. Like I know when you're sick and you're getting back into things, it's always a little slow going. You're a little more achy. You get pooped more quickly. Dudes, um, I do on Peloton. They have a camera system for your for weightlifting. It's called Guide. I could not lift over my head, and I kid you not, like an overhead, you know, whatever you want, thrusters or just overhead presses, I could not do two 15-pound dumbbells. Like, literally could not get them up. So I am ratcheting down my weights. And I don't know if any of you out there do any lifting. I am very new to strength training, but I have friends who have strength trained and been trainers for 
multiple years. I am, I am using, I was using 10, 15, and 20, sometimes 25 for like deadlifts. Um, so 10 was my light, yada, yada, yada. I am ratcheting down to 68 pounds for my light, 10 pounds for my medium, and 15 is now my heavy. And it makes me feel a little defeated, but I know that I need to have my, my form is more important than the weight portion. So I want to get my form back. And then when I'm ready, I guess I'll ratchet it back up. So anyway, I was not expecting that big of a uh, hit to my physical self, but that is what has happened. And I've ridden the bike a couple times and rides that would have been like nothing, like a warm up ride. It, it's like, right. It's like a marathon. So I think the toll that it has taken on my body is a lot more than I expected. So just curious for those of you who have either flu or COVID, whatever, have you experienced a similar, like, I can't believe this took me out in the way it took me out and it's not going away. Luckily, I did not lose my taste or my smell because that that would have been it for me because food. Because food. Um, but so anyway, I'm back to working out. I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good. Dude, the foam on this is out of control. I just want to take a drink and I can't because it's going to be all over me. But speaking of beer and foam, last night, Steve and I had like a quasi date night, kind of not really. Um and we went, I don't know if you can see this, ignore the fact that I have not washed this glass. That's so gross. Sorry. I'm, I'm a dirty person. Um, beer. We went to a beer fest, um, at Yellow Cab in Dayton last night. And what it was, I think it was 20 local breweries to Southern Ohio, um, all having one to two beers available. And if you bought tickets early you got these little glasses and you got eight free six ounce pours I only had six there was no way I could do eight and on the sixth one I was like okay Shannon cut off um Steve I think had seven so then we were like what are we gonna do with these three tokens so we walked around and I saw this girl who had this really cool acid yellow acid green hair I was like and I just tapped her on the arm she's like super tall too I was and I was like excuse me and I could tell she was like what the does this bitch want with me? I was like, I really like your hair and I'm leaving here. Would you like some free tokens? <laughs> I'm sure she was like, get this grandma out of my face. But no, really, she said thank you. She was very sweet. And yeah. Yeah. So that was our night. I had, what did I really, I really had, I didn't really have, I just had, I'm trying to think of what I really, really liked. There was a peach cider that was super tart that I really liked. Um, and then we have another brewery in Dayton called Carillon Brewery, and we have Carolyn Park, Carillon Bells. It's a kind of a historic metro park on the river, and they have a on-site brewery that try. I haven't had it, so I'm going to use the word tries because I can't tell you if they succeeded or not, but they try to recreate original beer recipes from like way back yonder. And I've had a couple friends say, yeah, they're not good. <laughs> and then I've had other people been like, oh, I love them. Well, we got a brown ale that they do that is not like an older recipe. It's a, uh, just theirs. It was really, really good. Um, I like brown ales that it's kind of like Guinness. When people look at Guinness, which is not a brown ale, it's a stout. But people look at Guinness like, oh, man, it's so heavy. Guinness is one of the lightest beers, I think, you can drink like to me it goes down like water it does it is not a heavy stout or a porter and this brown ale was the same thing I thought it was going to be more like a saison when it hit me like I was like okay this is going to have depth and it's going to fill me up it was so refreshing and good so anyway props to all the breweries that came out for a date and beer because it was a lot of fun a lot of people um all age brackets it's always good to see people coming out and supporting local businesses, breweries, things like that. Um, so yeah, good people watching, good time. We were out of there by seven. It started at five because <laughs> we're old. And we came home and we made, um, I forget what kind of sandwiches there were, but it was like tofurkey and then tempeh bacon, 
pumpernickel bread. You know, we just, we ate and then I had, someone might have had half a pint of dairy-free Jenny's lemon curd bar ice cream. I don't know who it would have been, but someone did. Oh my God, first sip, I needed that. Okay, let's get this shebang going. So, in the knitting world, uh, when we were last together, I am working on a Stephen West shawl smorgasbord. We'll put a picture of something, maybe the, pa I don't know, something here. Um, you guys, I'm not to the border yet, and this this needs to be done before October 6th, because October 6th is what? What is it? What? Yeah. It's the West Knits Knit Along Twists and Turns. Starts October 6th. Get your yarn ready. Three color shawl. 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 <laughs> shawl. What is happening? Okay. Three colors. 200, 200, 100. So 500, gr 500 grams. Yeah. So 200 grams color A, 200 grams color B, and then 100 C. You want two contrasting and a pop of color. There you go. Go get them. Fingering weight. Get yourself some US 4s probably. I don't know. I usually end up doing a US 5 to hit gauge, but you do you. And yeah, first clue drops October 6th. Hope you're there. I, sidebar note, but not really, I am going to start a separate video log series on the MCAL. I'm not going to include it in my normal podcast because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who may be behind because that happened to me and I didn't appreciate it because I'm always behind because I'm a slower knitter and you know what? Life and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm not going to pressure myself. And yeah. So anyway, I will have a separate playlist going for that once it starts. So look for that. But anyway, whole point being is I need to get through this shawl smorgasbord before October 6th, right? I can't be knitting two Stephen West complication chichas at one time. I will cry. My everything is so tangled right now. I have no I, whatever. Okay, I just don't even think it matters. Okay, you guys, it's so big. I will take a photo of this or maybe do B-roll footage and have Steve just insert it so you guys can kind of see this. Um, I'm all the way up here. I am in the last section before the border. So the last time we were together, I was just starting, see where my finger is, that mesh section. I would think I was just starting that. Oh, I just pop stitches. I, yeah, you know, showing knitting is not the easiest thing, guys. I know people make it look super easy. And for all the other vloggers out there who make this look effortless, you're like a ballerina of fiber. And I appreciate your hard work. I cannot duplicate it, but I respect it. So anyway, um, the border, the section I'm on right now is just a garter section. And I only have two more rows left on it. But guys... My wrist on my right hand is hurting so badly. So hang on, let me grab this. I am going to see if I can knit with this contraption on. I don't know what, I don't know if it's a mixture of the knitting and being back on the computer 40 hours a week and then weightlifting at the same time, like grip strength. Oh, you guys, mama needs some help. That just totally went on the floor because my life's a mess. Hey, One Ear, are you going to come back out and entertain people since I'm not doing a very good job? That's my cry for help, sir. You're supposed to be like, yes, mama, I will hop on out and I will entertain the masses. So anyway, that's where I'm at with this. Um, all right. So the border, <laughs> I do not know how many rows the border is, but I feel like it, it's like th like that. Like that's what it looks like. I don't know, 20 to 30 rows, probably. I don't know. I have no idea. That's a lot of knitting. It's a lot. I just need to do it. Now, the thing that's good is we're taking a road trip next weekend. We are headed up to Cuyahoga Falls. 
I kind of was burping in the middle of saying Cuyahoga. <laughs> and I tried to pass it off. I didn't think you'd notice, kind viewer. Hmm. So anyway, we're going to we're going to go to Cuyahoga Falls because we are going to go see Nine Inch Nails um, with Ministry and Nitzareb at Blossom Music Center. Music? I don't know. Some outdoor venue. Uh, we have lawn seats. I'm very excited. I've seen Nine Inch Nails before. Um, really good live. I saw them. I think I've seen them twice, actually, now that I've said that. Um the first time I saw them, it was in college. And I want to say it was either my freshman or sophomore year of college. And I think it was for Wish. But I think they played a lot of Pretty Hate Machine because I think it was right when Wish was coming out. So it was pretty early on. Really, really good show. Um, we did sit in the balcony on that show. And in retrospect, I'm really glad we did because... When I leaned over and looked down at the pit, I was like, oh, hell no. Because it, like, I feel like your girl would have taken an elbow or an arrow to the knee. You never know which. Um, but it was, <laughs> it was pretty hardcore. And I will say, I don't think the pits are necessarily, like, in New York are, are more, more violent. They're just bigger than they are in Ohio because there's more friggin' people. Um the thing I think really is really weird in Ohio, like when we go to shows, people will start a pit at any show. Like music that, like, why would you have a pit going for this? I don't understand. Like, but so that's the, that is the difference between Ohio and New York pits to me. But anyway, so we were in the balcony. Die Warzow opened up for them um, then, and it was really, really good. I'm really excited about this one because I have never seen Nitzareb. I love Nitzareb, um, early Nitzareb for sure. Um, yeah, I, th I'm very excited to see that. Ministry, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent about. While I love ministry, I'm going to be the one that people are like, oh, yeah. I like really old ministry, you guys. I liked with sympathy. I liked the synth. And I know it wasn't what Al Jurgensen wanted to be doing and whatever, but I really liked it. Twitch, I really liked Land of Rape and Honey, phenomenal album. And then what is it, Mind? I forget the one after that. That had like New World o Order and Thieves on it. Really, really, really liked that album. Everything after that, I have just kind of been, eh. Like I could, I could walk away and not worry about it. Um, so I know, I know I'm not going to hear like the early stuff because he would they would never play that. But I do hope to hear maybe something off of Land of Rape and Honey, like maybe Land of Rape and Honey. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I think, you know, when you start looking at the artists that I listened to when I was younger, I, I don't know if you're like this. I have a tendency to forget, like as I get older, so do they. Like for some reason, certain bands will be stuck in a time pocket for me in an era of my life. And I forget that those artists are real living people and they have lives and they get older. And so I was thinking about this the other day. I saw, who was it with? Uh, Ogre from Skitty Puppy. And it was an interview that was like five years old. It was from Horror Hound. And it was this really, really cute kid who I forget how old he was, maybe in between eight and 10, maybe. Really young kid who interviewed him. And just was a really good at interviewing him. But when I was listening, I'll, if I can find that, I will link it. If you like Skinny Puppy and you like watch kids interviewing rock stars, it's it's a good one. Anyway, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I was taken aback. I was like, oh, shit, Ogre's old. <laughs> and not in a bad way. I mean, he's a good looking dude um, for sure. And he always has been. But he's aging very well. But it just dawned on me, for some reason, he was always in my head like a particular way and I the but time moved for him the same way it moved for me so as I got older so did he and I think when I think about ministry I just can't imagine being that <laughs> sounds so horrible and ageist but I just can't imagine being like in my 60s because I'm not I'm only in my 50s but and rocking out like that like that's some serious rocking out like and maybe it's because 
I equate that with anger and I equate that with my youth. Like when, and I'm still angry about a lot of things now. So I guess this is, I'm, I guess I'm lying in one way, but I think I equate that type of emotional release in music to rage and to change into youth. I don't equate it with an AARP membership. <laughs> anyway, cheers. Oh, ARP. Anyway, we're headed to Cuyahoga Falls. The old people are headed up. Young people, gird your loins because the old people are coming in and you just look out. Um, I can knit in the car. That was the whole point of this. The whole point was I've got the border, but I've got three hours in a car. So, and I can knit pretty well as well. Obviously I'm not driving, so I can knit and I can read pretty well in a car. So I'm hoping that I can knock out a good chunk next weekend. So that's, that's, that's this. You guys, I do really like the way it's looking and I do really like the colors. Um, I mean, it's a little bit like Shazam, but it's very much me. And I just, I'm going to enjoy like putting that on and like going to like Dayton Beer Company or whatnot and sitting on their patio. So now I do have to burp. Ugh, that, oh, that's very unsatisfying. Don't you hate that? So yeah, anyway, we'll be going to go see that show next weekend. Very excited about that. And then, yeah, that, guys. That is the knitting. That's it. That's all I've done. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if that's the only reason why you're here, please don't go away. But I get it um, because, you know, you're going to miss out on everything that I have bought because I told you last time. Someone needs to put their friggin credit card away and that someone is also the same person that ate the lemon curd ice cream, but whatever. All right, let's do this. Let's talk about some things that I bought. Okay, so I'm in a yarn club, the uh, BZY Peach Yarn Club. Um, it's a monthly club, and she just auto-sends out a skein of yarn and some freebies, right? I don't know what happened, but I got two clubs at once, and apparently I either I was either she missed me on July. I don't know what happened, but I got July and August at the tail end of August which I didn't even care about. And thank God, you know what? Props to her because she could have totally just skipped that. I don't think I ever would have noticed. So I, I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate her sending it. So anyway, let's get into this. Now, I do not know which is July and which is August. So we're just not going to worry about that. And somewhere I'm going to have to put on my glasses. You guys, the glasses. Sorry for the glare. All right. So the first one, let's do this. Oops. So it's the Peachy Yarn Club, and it's at bzypeach.com. All right, so this colorway, oh, it's I love this. I really do. This is called Freckled Splash. This would be really pretty. Like, if, I think I might do a scrappy dotted raise, Stephen West. I think this would be really pretty. Um, this is... 100% Pima cotton. It's DK weight, so there's 218 yards, and it's 100 grams. Um, I really, really, really like this. Really, really like this. It came with... <laughs> this just cracked me up. And I was just thinking about this the other day. It doesn't matter. But it came with patches, and there's a banana with sunglasses, and there's a strawberry. Because behind me... can Oh. Oh. I'm blocking it. Hang on. I don't think that you're going to be able to see this. Okay. Behind me, behind me on my bean bag, um, someone by the name of Harriet. That's Harriet right there. Um, likes to chew on the bean bag and has put holes in the cover and I need patches. So I will be patching said bean bag. It also came, and I don't know what you guys, I don't know what it is. Is it like a coaster? No. I don't know what this is. Do you know what this is? It feels like a mouse pad. I don't know what this is. If you know what this is, let me know. Okay. 
the next month came, and this is called party. No, it's not. I'm already lying to you. It's called Peach on the Beach. You guys, it's got the water, it's got the sand, it's got the peach. I love it. I love this. Love, love, love it. I think this is the same thing. Yeah, it's Pima Cotton. It's the same one. DK weight. So that came. Now here's the thing I'm just going to say for all you folk who do yarn clubs and for you small business people, I am all for supporting other small businesses in club packages like the freebies that you get, like I love them to be other people in small business to help support people. However, I do draw the line with this one and I, this is, maybe you'll get me, maybe you'll say I'm overreacting, but the freebie was a frigging Mary Kay item. First of all, I don't even think Mary Kay is vegan. So that's another thing altogether. Second of all, Mary Kay is a friggin' MLM, basically. It's a pyramid scheme. I, fight me, at me. I just, it just bummed me out that that's what it was. I would have preferred nothing as opposed to Mary Kay. Now, I know there's some woman out there who's selling Mary Kay who needs the money, right? And I would love to support that, but I can't in good conscience support a company that you're recruiting, like, at least here locally, like, the thing that sticks out in my mind is I knew a woman who sold Mary Kay who specifically went to college campuses to get sororities involved. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, stop pimping out young women to sell fucking, I don't know. I, I just don't. I'm not, I'm not here for it. I don't, if you're here for it, if you sell it, dude, please just don't. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about MLMs? Like, what are the ones, the leggings, the Lulu, whatever, I don't, Lulumon, I don't know. No, it's not that. What is it? I can't even remember. And then there was a weird makeup one. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, love the yarn. We'll continue. We'll absolutely continue to get this club because I've really enjoyed it. Um, that's the only misstep we've had. And she, I mean, the other misstep that I didn't even catch was not getting July and she totally could have gotten away with not sending it. And I, you know what? She did. So, hey, I'm in full support of BZY Peach. So the other thing in life I have to talk about is D&D. &D. You guys, I joined a new D&D &D group. I am so excited for it. Um, it is, a gr it's all women. We meet twice a month and... I am so stoked after going. I was really, really anxious about the first meeting because I was like, you know, what's going on? You know, like when you're when you're putting yourself in a situation, you have no idea what you're walking into. That's what happened. And that always makes me anxious. So the drive there, my little heart was like, B -d -b -d -b -d -b -b, you know, like I was having a little anxiety, but everybody was so friggin' nice. And I didn't feel like a grandma. They didn't make me feel like I stuck out like a sore thumb. I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited. It's going to be a homebrew campaign. I am playing Tislin Hive Hoarder. I am a Hill Dwarf Ranger. Um, and I am right now level one, so I have nothing much to tell you about her other than that her family, is <laughs> not vegan, they're beekeepers. <laughs> um, but what happened was when I found out that there was this women's group that was meeting, I found out two days before they were meeting. So they had already had a session zero and people had already created characters and already kind of knew the world, so to speak. I needed to fit my character in with what their characters already had established. And one of them was a monk. No. Oh, shit. Two of them worked out of a temple in the city in a food kitchen. One of them stayed in the kitchen and one kind of was just a life of service, basically. And I was like, okay, what is my tie in to a soup kitchen as a hill dwarf who lives on the outside of the city? I was like, okay, well, I'm, I got to come into the city. I'm probably selling something. 
right? And then I thought, okay, what could I give or donate or sell to a food kitchen to improve their food? Honey. So that's, I I mean, I could have done maple syrup, but honestly, it just didn't dawn on me. So I have a non-vegan D&D character. We'll see how that goes. Um, They don't even know I'm vegan, by the way. And I don't think I'm going to tell them. I think I'm just going to let that go. Um, And we'll see what happens. I did tell them, I did tell the DM, like I had one like trigger where I'm, I'm piecing out. And I just told her I can't kill real world animals in a D&D game. Meaning that like, it is one thing if you're in a dungeon and you're being attacked by a gargoyle or like a zombie or a gelatinous cube, like I'm all in, I will cut a bitch, but don't take me out in the forest and be like, there's a mama bear and her cubs and you need dinner. Yeah, fuck you. I'm not killing a mama bear and her cubs. Ain't happening. I will tiptoe through the tulips away from that situation. So I kind of told her that that was a trigger for me. And she was like, you know what? She's like, that's actually a really great point. She's like that to bring up. She said, because you don't have to kill everything in D&D. Like you can run away. You can negotiate. Not everything has to be a fight to the death. And I really, really appreciated the way she answered it and the way she handled it. Um, A little background would be in long, long ago, I was in a group and we had a jackass who, yeah, you'll never see this, but if you do, fuck you, um, who put our characters in an arena in a gladiator fight. And he knew, he knew I had a problem with this and he kept pushing it. So we had to kill wolves. We had to kill bear. Like it went on and on. And the person I was playing with what happened to be at the time, my husband, no, at the time, he still is my husband. Anyway, um, one of us had the sleep spell and I don't remember which. So we were putting, an- I think we both had the sleep spell. So we alternated where we would put the animals to sleep. And then, and then that pissed this guy off so badly. It just got worse and worse. And I did not know that I had such a trigger moment until after that like and then I realized that's my line and when once you've crossed it like there was no trusting him ever again like and he ended up being a rage quitter he was just a nightmare I hope his wife is okay I'm uh, oh he's just a psychotic person and that is kind of the issue when you join a D&D group with people you don't know you don't know them like right you don't know who they are um And so in this instance, when I found out it was an all-female group, it immediately made me feel better because girls who game have a bond with each other that's a little bit different because girls who game, whether it is tabletop gaming, board games, video games, there is no way as a girl gamer you have not gone through the mansplaining. Like there's always a dude who finds out that you play such and such and want to make sure that you understand how to play. Because how could a girl know how to do that? Like that attitude, like I hate telling people that it is still prevalent. It still happens. It is annoying as fuck. And just to be in an all women's group, like immediately that pressure is not there. Like you don't have to prove yourself. And not that I've ever felt like I have to prove myself but when you sit at a D&D table with all men as the only woman, it is really awkward at times, particularly because they don't understand boundaries um, that women would have. And I, I'm not going to, that's generalization. It's not all guys. It's not all D&D groups. But more often than not, there are situations that come up and you're like, really, dude? Really? Would you, I, I don't know. And that I feel like, element is non-existent in a female gaming group and it is so welcomed it is so I'm so happy with it um so I will report back on that I am going to post a video on character creation but I'm going to do it separately so anyway that's what's going on in my D&D world I will keep you updated with Tislin and where she's headed I do need to find dice for Tislin because my dice aren't right for her and I'm weird like My dice need to fit my character, and I don't have any dice that fit a hill dwarf ranger who beekeeps. Like, I I haven't found them yet. So if you know any, let me know, and I will look at it. 
Okay, so that's my D&D. I think that, guys, I think that's it. I, th I think I cannot talk any longer because I've been talking so much. So, hmm. Oh, literature for your literature is going to be a separate playlist. I forgot to mention that, which I will start next week. I do have updates on that. But what's going to happen is I am going to separate out content. <laughs> and I'm laughing as I say this in the hopes to shorten the podcast. <laughs> For several reasons. I have noticed when I watch podcasts, when they're like, yeah, I've time stamped it so you can skip ahead. My lazy ass ain't skipping ahead. I'm just turning it off. Like, that's me. So I'm trying to think about like how I view things and how I operate. And that's how I'm going to treat this. So I really don't think I'm going to time stamp my podcast ever. But what I am going to do is pull content out to separate playlists and point you to them. So like at the end of the podcast, I'll give you links of where you can go if you're interested in literature for your literature, if you're interested in gaming, like D&D, tabletop, all that, or if you're interested in the MCAL, okay? Um, and I think it, I want to try that for the fall for a couple of reasons. I'm going to film differently where I'm going to film for a shorter period of time for hopefully a shorter bi-weekly podcast on the knitting. And then... Every other week, I will do some type of other content, whether it's literature for your literature, whatever it is, that I will do in a short form um, and point you to a different playlist. I'm going to try that because, one, I think it will ease up my filming schedule a little bit because I can film really quickly a literature for your literature before work, right? Um, grouping everything together in a long vlog, it just takes a little bit longer to put together and... Honestly, I don't want to spend an entire Saturday doing that when it's nice outside going into fall. I've got other stuff that life, you know, that you want to go do. So some changes are coming. Just bear with me. It's going to be a little bit rocky. No different than any other of my podcasts. <laughs> so if you've been here this long, you already know that bitch does not shut up. So you guys... It's the end. So you know what I'm going to say to you. What am I going to say to you? I'm going to tell you. Take care of yourself so you can take care of one another. Oh, my Lord, that's what we need. And love yourself so that you can love one another. Um, there's been a lot of crappy things going on. And... I will be the first to say that people are not pawns for politics. DeSantos. Flying people to Martha's Vineyard as if they are not even human beings. I don't know what to say to that anymore. In the immortal words of Depeche Mode, people are people. So why can't it be that you and I, you know, you don't need me to sing you the song. People are people, man. We're all people. One people. Now I am sounding like the Grateful Dead. Good God. No. What? It's these shoes. It's the sandals, you guys. It's hippified my life. Anyway, I don't know. Go plant some wildflowers. Pet a bunny, pet a cat, you know, enjoy, enjoy life, enjoy the beer, you know, I'm so stupid, I love you guys, I'll see you next time, take care. <laughs>